Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe that God is going to give us the best days of our life. Ah, our ladder should be better than our fault. God is going to do it and he's going to do it suddenly and I believe it.
our mission statement. As a welcoming committee of faith, our mission is to glorify God by building a local church family which extends the kingdom of God educationally, mind, physically, body, and spiritually, spirit, in accordance with God's word. Our statement of faith. We believe the Bible to be the only infallible written word of God. We believe that there is one God, eternally existent in three manifestations, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is the totality of divine completeness. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us through the redemptive work of Christ being on the cross. We believe in the indwelling of the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2.4 which enables Christians to live a holy and sanctified life. We believe that faith in God through Jesus provides healing for humankind in answer to believing prayer. We believe that this faith is given to all men in spite of race, creed, or color. All can be saved. Hello, this is Bishop Darrell L. Hill from the Powerhouse Church in New York. I am so glad and so excited to greet you and to talk to you about something God has laid on our heart. The great Martin Luther King Jr. said, one of the most persistent and urgent questions is what are you doing for others and with that in mind God has led us to start what we call power feed I would like for you to be a part of that you can sow into power feed we have been compelled to feed a hundred families with a hundred dollars worth of groceries I know you want to be a part of that what an amazing feeling to bless someone else Listen, you can sow into that by going to dollar sign Daryl Hill, cash app that, $150, $20, whatever you give, it will be most appreciated. Once again, you can continue to sow to dollar sign Daryl Hill at cash app, or if you know any families who are in need, our goal is to serve a hundred families with a hundred dollars of groceries. I know we can do it together. Remember, if you got the faith, God has the power. Power feed. God bless you. A doctor walks in with bad news and good. The bad news? You have a fatal disease. The good news? There is a cure, a treatment that is 100% effective. All you have to do is accept it. What would you choose? Every day, millions of people say no to the cure. They choose to live with the disease, or they choose to believe it doesn't exist. And the symptoms are everywhere. Depression, broken families, greed, selfishness, corruption, escalating violence and hate for one another, murder, terrorism, abuse. What is that condition that affects us all? What is the sickness or disease we cannot shake? It's called sin. And we're all born with it. We do what we want to do. We do what's best for us. We do what feels good. It comes natural to all of us and it stains us. It opens up a great divide between us and our creator because it's not how we're created to live. We were designed by God for more, to be part of something bigger than just these simple things, to know our creator as father, to follow him and to live for him. More than anything, he desires a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with you but it's impossible our sin and our imperfections are incompatible we may try to have our good deeds our way our bad but they can never get us closer to a perfect God that is why Jesus came to us he sent his son not as a king or a mighty warrior 
but as a baby born in a stable, born to die on a cross for our sins, to pay for our mistakes, our sins with his perfect blood. With his death, he bridged the great divide. The punishment that we deserve, he took upon himself. With his resurrection, he conquered the grave. He made a way for us when there seems to be no way. So how do we respond? Please make this your prayer. Say, God, I am a sinner, imperfect, messed up, going my own way. I trust today in the blood of Jesus to wash all my sins away. And I invite you into my life and I give you control and I ask for your Holy Spirit to come and live inside of me. If you will say these words and mean it with all of your heart, you will become a Christian today. Right now, right where you are, and God will hear you. The cure is before you and your family. What will you choose? To learn more, please come to our website and we'll help you in any way that we can. More than anything, please do something today. Praise the Lord and welcome once again to the Powerhouse Church. Thank you so much for sharing your time and space with us. We are excited, amen, to have you join in with our virtual service. Thank you so much once again, amen. I want to take this time to say thank you to those of you who've been supporting Power Feed, amen. We've been able to feed a couple of families, amen. And our goal for this year is 100 families with $100 worth of groceries. And I thank you so much, those of you who've been really working, amen, and sowing in that capacity. Thank you so much, amen. To those of you who've been supporting the Power Move project, amen. The Lord is working and doing some amazing things. Bless the name of God, we are, we are glad. This is the first Sunday of the month of June. And we are excited about it. Amen. We're entering in a brand new month. This year is going fast. God is doing something amazing. Amen. And I believe by faith that the second half of this year is going to be the best half. Amen. And we thank and praise God for that. Amen. Those of you, amen, who've been supporting and sowing, amen, and giving encouraging words as we transition and prepare, amen, in this process, amen, of entering into ownership. Thank you so much. We do salute you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God is doing something great. Amen. We will be having a church meeting. Amen. After this service. And so we're asking, amen, all of you uh, who are members and our leaders, amen, to make sure, amen, you go in on our Zoom. Amen. You find it in your group chats. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, that will be, amen, directly after service. Amen. Around one o'clock. And so I want to say thank you for a uh, being patient with us as we go through this process. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Last month we had been for the month of May. We've been talking about preparation and we believe that prophetically God speaks to us and gives us amen. Uh, a target. Amen. Where we need to hit each month. Amen. And last month we talked about preparation as I forestated, amen, in this month of June, we'll be talking about release. Bless the name of God. I believe God is releasing some things in the atmosphere. Amen for you and yours. Amen. And we're excited. We want to position ourselves and prepare ourselves for the release. Amen. Uh, look at somebody in your house and tell them something big is about to transpire. I believe it by faith. Amen. We thank and praise God. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. I'm not going to be before you long. Bless the name of God. Amen. We're going to the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, and we will commence reading at the first verse, and we'll go down to about, amen, the sixth verse. Isaiah, 
the sixth chapter, first verse going down to about the sixth verse. I'll read further if need be. Bless the name of God. But for uh, where we're trying to go, amen, one through six should do. Amen. Amen. I love the word of God. Amen. Just post that up. Amen. Put that on the screen. I love God's word. Isaiah 6, 1 through 6. Amen. Here, readeth the word of the Lord. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, first verse, down to the sixth verse. Reads on this wise. In the year that king, and just so you know, I am reading the English Standard Version, so it will be different from your King James Version. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 6 and 1, English Standard Version, reads on this wise. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Yeah. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, and two he covered his face, yeah. and two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Yes. The earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hands a burning coal that he had taken with tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for and the word of the Lord is blessed yes. I want to focus on that first verse in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple the eight clause of that first verse in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord I saw the Lord. Yeah. I, I want to use for a thought on uh, this morning into this afternoon. Uh, God is about to remove the blockage. God is about to remove the blockage. I have been uh, using my pastime to read a couple of books and coming across information and hearing. Uh, some of the thoughts of some of the greatest writers uh, that have ever existed, uh, in my opinion, uh, came across something that, that really caught my attention. The writer in this particular book of miracles was talking about how oftentimes God is releasing things in the atmosphere and we as the people of God oftentimes miss what God is doing. Yeah. What his argument is that the release of miracles and what you desire is always present. But what happens to the individual who's looking and praying and desiring the move of God or miracles or what have you, he or she oftentimes miss it because they are dealing with blockages. I thought that was very interesting because it's possible for you to be in the presence of God and not detect God possible for you to be in, in, in the room where the Spirit of God is, is moving and, and some are being moved by the presence of God and others are sitting there missing out because there may be a blockage. Yeah. A blockage. I don't ever want to live this life knowing that God has more in store for me 
and I'm unable to attain it because of a blockage. And so after reading this portion of the book, I started to pray, God, whatever it is that has been in my way blocking me, I want you to remove it because I need to be in tune with what you are doing. I don't want to miss it. I missed it years ago. I missed it so many times. I just don't want to miss it. And the Lord began to talk to me and deal with me because oftentimes when we look at blockages, we look at negativity. We think that it's the negative things and sin that is blocking us. But I honestly believe the enemy has upped his ante. He has become more wiser on how to deal with the believer, not the sinner or not those who are trying to get saved, but the believer. What he has done is he, he has worked even in your good. Like the good things that are happening to you can become a blockage and hold you from missing the release of God. That, that, that can be a good problem, a good situation. Things seem good to you, feel good to you, and, and things that seem like is working for you could really be the thing that's blocking you from receiving what God has for you in totality. That, that's very, very important for us to pay attention to because I don't want to ever have something in the way of what God is trying to do. I want to get all that God has for me. And in dealing with release, I, I need to understand because oftentimes we are pointing it towards God. Like, Lord, why haven't you released? And the reality of it is God is saying, I have released. Why haven't you seen? Why haven't you received? See, it's the receiving part of the release that's important as well. I, th I think we look at God's hand being released, and his hand is always being released. But the reality of it is we, we're not positioned, we're not clear to receive. And that's what God wants us to see even in this particular text. Here we have Isaiah who is now being called to be a prophet. The, the, this, this chapter here talks about Isaiah's introduction into the call that God has on his life. And as you see this, the beginning, the A clause of the first verse deals with the fact that Isaiah says these words, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In this particular year, I, I began to see God. I thought that was very amazing and impactful, and it was packed with a lot of power. That statement, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So it interests me to look up who Uzziah, Uzziah was. As I began to research Uzziah, I found out that Uzziah was a young king. He started his, to take the throne at the age of 16. He shared the responsibility with his father, who was also king, and they shared a dual kingship, working together kings over Judah. Uh, that lasted for 24 years, and his father dies, and Uzziah becomes king, and he stays king for 52 years in total. It is Uzziah who was considered, when you look at the broad stroke of the kings of Judah, to be one of the good kings. He was a good king. He, he, he did everything right. He did what he was supposed to do. He, he ascended to power and prestige because he was such a good king, God began to bless him. But even in the midst of those blessings, sometimes we can get into ourselves and start thinking that we have privileges that are not really our privileges. Uh, you need to understand God is a systematic God and how God works is he, he works with numbers. He, he works in a way that he does everything intricately to, to connect all the things that he will do in the future and what he's done in the past, even what he's doing presently. What I mean by that, that if you look into the Old Testament, the 
Old Testament is just the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is just the Old Testament revealed. It means that everything is in connection and there's nothing that can be out of order when it comes to God displaying his message to the world. That's why, that's why it was, it was such a bad thing for Moses to strike the rock. And two things here. One, he was to speak to the rock because God is trying to show us significantly is not what we do with our hands, but what we speak out of our mouths that sends a release. It's, it's what you declare out of your mouth because the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Number two, he only strikes the rock uh, two times, which would have denote that Jesus would have dwelt in the ground, in the grave for only two days. He's the rock. He's in the ground and he's being struck only two times. No, it was supposed to be three. So God is upset because he messes up the whole flow of what God is trying to do. And because of it, it, Moses misses the promised land because he is out of order one time one time. I need you to understand how powerful this is. It, it was King Uzziah who messed up. He messed up just like that because it is King Uzziah who goes into the temple and when he's in his strength and in all his power and what he tries to do is he tries to burn the incense. He tried to burn the incense. He, he's the king but he's doing the job of a priest and what God didn't want is for one person to operate in king, priest, or prophet. He, he wanted he wanted all of those offices, those three offices, to be separated. He didn't want it to be together because the only one that would be prophet, priest, and king is the Messiah. That's right. That's right. So he didn't want Isaiah to, to work in the, the, another realm that he was not called to. He was king, and he was never supposed to send up incense in the tabernacle. But he did it anyway because sometimes when you are successful, pride can get in the way. Sometimes when you think you're doing it all by yourself, pride can get in the way. Sometimes when God's favor is on your life, you think you're untouchable. And so he tries to work into a realm that he's not called for. That's my prayer. Lord, if you're releasing to me, release unto me what belongs to me. Release unto me what I understand belongs to me and only me. I don't want no Nobody else's anointing. I don't want to flow like nobody else. Give me the anointing that belongs to me and allow me to perceive it, to understand it. It is King Uzzah who messes up, and the Bible goes on to tell us when you look at the history of King Uzzah, he messed up, and God was upset, and immediately God strikes him with leprosy. He was a good king all the way up until the time where he got into himself and got prideful, and he messed up, and God strikes him with leprosy and leaves him to be isolated for the rest of his years, living in the home separated from the throne. He has the title of the king, but he He's not in position because he came against what God was doing. He tried to do something good. Burning incense was a good thing. It wasn't a bad thing. But when good is out of place and good is out of order, it messes up what God is trying to do. Uh, I, I don't want you to allow good to mess you up. Uh, that, that's what you need to be looking at somebody in your house and tell them don't allow good to mess you up. See, you can be good but in the wrong place and, and then things work out against you because you think you're doing good. Uh, see, good, 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 good. I heard one person say in a book, he said, good is the enemy of greatness. Uh, I need you to understand you. Sometimes we put and focus ourselves on good and good can be the very thing that is blocking us. He was so used to receiving accolades, so used to being called a good king as he lined himself up with the kings of Judah. He's the 10th king and those who were before him were not as good as he and so he thought himself to be good and so he goes in and does something he is not called to do and I think that's the problem with the church. We got too many people People who are working in capacities they're not called for. 
he, 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 God, he, he goes in there and he sends up the, the, burns up the incense and he sends the burnt offering up and he's out of order. God strikes him with leprosy and this is the king. This is a good king. This is a good king. And, and the Lord says, no, you were out of order. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to kill you because death was the penalty of, of, of doing something out of order in the temple. Now, it was death when you did something and you were not called to do. Uh, uh, you remember Moses uh, and all those who thought they would rise up against Moses uh, and they thought they would send up offerings and incense and, and use the censers uh, like Moses and Aaron. Uh, you know the story in the book of Numbers. They were swallowed up by the ground because they were out of order. Death was the penalty but because he was such a good king, God gave him grace and dispatched him to live in dead. I need you to understand he didn't take his body but he was living separate from everything the Bible talks about how death is a separation he separated him from the throne and some of you need to understand you don't ever want to be the living dead you don't, you don't ever want to be living and existing and not walking in your calling existing and not moving in the things that God has called you to do oh you don't ever just want to exist yeah that ain't really living that's death living is when you're doing what God has called you to do and you can see God releasing the power of his might into your life that's what living is it is now here we find prophet uh, 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 Isaiah he he says in the year that King Uzziah died I, I begin to see the Lord in other words uh, I was wrapped up in such a good king I was so caught up into such a good king that when he died I begin to see the Lord in other words God was always there releasing his power releasing who he was in into my life but I couldn't see him because the king was a blockage the good thing in my life my mentor was the blockage I come to share with you there's some things God is separating out of your life uh, they're good things to you and you're wondering why it's not working out and God is saying because it's been a blockage I don't want you to give it the glory all the glory belongs to me if I'm going to bring you out of debt it's going to be me if I'm going to heal it's going to be me. If I'm going to deliver, it's going to be me. I want all the glory. I don't want your job to get the glory. I don't want your finances to get the glory. I want all the glory. The Bible says, it is Isaiah the prophet who says, I saw the Lord. And I saw him in his kingly. He was high and lifted up. He was sitting upon a throne. In other words, Isaiah, King Isaiah was not really the king. He was the king, but he was not the king of kings. So I no longer had to see Isaiah on the throne. I needed to see the Lord on the throne sitting high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. You need to understand the train was at the length of the success of a king. So the more battles a king won is the longer his train was. Glory be to God. And so what God was saying was every battle that Judah the one. Every fight Judah was in, every victory Judah had, it was me. My train filled the entire temple. It was Isaiah who began to see it when Isaiah died. He needed to see the Lord was his victor. The Lord was his king. The Lord was the one. Then he is exposed to the throne. He said there I saw seraphim angels. Each of them had six wings. Two covered the eyes. Two covered the feet. And two they flew with. Because God was so irradiant and glorious. They couldn't see his glory. There's another level of God's glory that you can't even take. There's another level of God's presence that you're not even ready for. He said they circled around his throne crying out holy, holy 
holy, holy. I need you to understand. They circled around the whole throne of God, giving glory unto the Lord. He said, and the foundations of the thresholds begin to shake as the voice of him who called. Out of the house was filled with smoke. And he said, woe is me for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. In other words, he was used to seeing Uzziah as the king. And he thought that was it. He looked at Uzziah, his mentor, and saw all the good he did and thought that was it. But God was saying there was so much more. And when Uzziah died, Isaiah began to see the Lord. And when he saw the Lord, he saw the flaws in himself. See, some of you think the closer you get to God, the better you are, the greater you are. And you're only better or greater because you start to see your flaws. You start to see yourself. You can't spend time with God and not look at your own mistakes. You can't spend time with God and not see your own flaws. It is Isaiah who said, when I got in his presence, I saw that I'm a man of unclean lips. And those that are around me are unclean also. He saw the need of a real king. And he said, I saw the Lord. I saw the king. He's the Lord of every host. Glory be to God. Then he said, the seraphim flew unto me. He took the coals of fire that were burning in his hands. And he touched it on my tongue. They came from the altar. Glory be to God. I can't stand it when we got so many anointed people who never get to the altar. They can preach but they never pray. They can sing but they never at the altar. They want to prophesy but they never at the altar. See it starts at the altar. It starts on your knees. God is saying I want to release unto you another level of power. Another level of anointing. But it got to come from the altar. It's not who you know in your circle. It's the altar. It's the altar that gets you to the anointing. He says, when the seraphim put the fire of coals on his mouth and he touched his mouth with him, he said, behold, this has touched your lips and the guilt now has been taken away. I removed Uzziah who was a blockage to your visual and I remove your guilt that's a blockage to your ministry now you are released and I need you to understand God is saying some of you holding back cause the guilt of your past has been looming over your head people been holding it back holding it over your head don't allow you the privilege of forgetting those things that are behind you they're holding it over your head the mistakes you made but I hear the Lord say there's about to be a release in the anointing I'm about to set a release so I'm removing the stuff you thought was good for you I'm removing it out of your life cause I want you ready for where you're going get ready for a release get ready for a release God's about to give you a brand new release I need somebody to look in your home testify and declare the blockage that's been over my life has been removed and I 
see a release in the anointing. I see a release in the power of the Holy Ghost. Release in my finances. Release in my ministry. Release somebody. Lose your praise right where you are. Lose your praise right where you are. Yeah, because I'm a firm believer. Whatsoever things you bind on earth shall be bound in the heaven. And whatsoever things you loose on the earth shall be loose in the heaven. If you want heaven to release, you got to release. Yeah, if you want healing, release. You got to release your praise. Yeah, somebody type it up on the screen. Release, release, release. Lord, have your way. Lord, move by your power. Sin, the release. Sin, the release. We're not asking for the money. We're not asking for the car. We're not asking for the houses. We're asking for the power to be released. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Open your mouth in your heart and say, Lord, release it. Lord, release it. Lord, release it. Somebody shout, yes, yes, release, 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 release. He cut the bohosha. Some of y'all waiting for the music, but I dare lose your praise right in the room and declare this is my day of release. Say yeah. Glory to God. Release. God says, I've been releasing, but I got to remove the blockage. It's not me. The Lord says, It's not me. There are some things that got to die, that got to separate itself from you in order for you to see that I've been releasing. When the Spirit of God is released, you see yourself. See, people think they're anointed to see other people's flaws. People think that they're in power, positions of power, to see other people's flaws. But the higher you go, the more you see yourself. God says, I want to release more power. I want to release my anointing. But there's been a blockage. You know, sometimes your pride can be your blockage. Sometimes nobody being able to tell you anything can be a very big blockage to you. Humility is always the way. The prophet says, the same year that as I died, the same year I saw God. I saw that he was my victory, not the king. I saw that he was my deliverer, not the king. I saw that he was my Lord and king, not the one I looked to. Because the one I looked to had flaws too. See, I, I, it's very dangerous to go to a church because of a personality. You have to see God. 
that, 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 that perspective has got to be released. God says, when you see me, then I release. Because the blockages are removed. God had always been there. But Isaiah couldn't see him because of Isaiah. He couldn't see him. God says, what is it that's blocking your vision, your view of seeing me so when you see me, you can see yourself? I'm releasing myself to you. What is it that's blocking you? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that you're dealing with. I don't know what it is that's in the way. And I'm telling you, it don't have to be negative. It can be a good. It could be a good. And it's not allowing you. It's good to have friends, but it's not good for them to block your view of God. Bless the name of God. There may be someone here who's saying, this word has challenged me to see, to look for God. I want to chase after God. I have not accepted him. I know of God, but I have not accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I want you to take this time. Point your right hand in this direction. If you desire to be saved, just follow after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we are a mess without you. We made so much mistakes, so many mistakes, and we've fallen so many different times. We ask God that you would forgive us for all our sins. You said in your word, God, if we will believe on you as the scriptures had declared that you were, you have sent the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. He was born in immaculate conception. He was, he lived and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was beaten and crucified and put up on a cross. And after giving up the cross, he was placed in the borrowed tomb. And three days later, he rose with all power in his hand. You said that we believe this, we shall be saved. And we believe it by faith. And we are saved. Thank you for saving us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray. I want to pray for these that are here present. You've been saved. You've been walking with God. But you know there's more for you. And you don't know what it is. Sometimes you can be blocking yourself to submitting to the will of God. Sometimes a person can be the blockage. Sometimes a situation can be the blockage. Whatever it is, God says, I want to remove the blockage because I want you to receive this release. I want you to receive it. Let's pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now, Father, that anything and everything that is blocking us from receiving and seeing the release of your power in our lives, Father, we ask God that you remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, if there's anything in us that's blocking, Father, we ask that you remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. We can't do it ourselves. We're depending on you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. We believe by faith that you're able to do it. And we thank you. We praise you in advance in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the name of God. We thank and praise God for you. This time we want to prepare, amen, for our tithers to come and sow, amen. If you are a tither, we ask that you put it in the comment section. I am a tither, amen. Bless the name of God, amen. I am a tither. Bless the name of God, amen. This is a blessed house because we are a tithing house, amen. Get that tenth, get that tenth. Amen. Bless the name of God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Get that tenth. Amen. Prepare yourselves. I am a tither. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Come on, get that tenth in your hand. Come on, I want you to follow after me. Amen. Bless the name of God. I hereby enter into this sacred covenant with God to tie to the source of my spiritual teachings. I do this with the understanding that God did not institute the tithe to bring us under the law, but to give blessings to me and my household. I also understand 
that this is a sacred agreement between me and God. I'm invoking this relationship and bringing it to the forefront of my life. Amen. Extend those hands as you're preparing to give your tenth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for these, your tithers. We ask that you bless them according to your word, for you said in your word, if we will prove you now here with the tenth, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we don't even have room enough to receive. You said that you have rebuked the devourer for our sake, and that a vine should cast its fruit before season, but in due season will certainly come past, and all nations shall call us blessed. We take you at your word. Now, Father, we pray, God, that you do more for these than they can anticipate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, tithers. Amen. Come on. Put it up. I am a tither. Bless you. Amen. Amen. We are not only tithers, but we are givers. We believe in giving into ministry. So many people have a problem with sowing. And I don't understand it. Amen. Because it's the proof is in the put. Amen. Whatsoever man sow it. That shall he also reap. Amen. Bless the name of God. I believe if you sow money as a seed, God's going to sow or allow you to reap power to get wealth. I believe it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who can sow a seed of $100, this is a custom at our church. We believe in giving. And that's why we have so many people who are homeowners business owners, entrepreneurs, amen, because we believe in sowing seed, amen. God is a systematic God. The world does not even evolve without being a part of a system, amen. Bless the name of God, amen. Come on, those of you who can sow that $100, I want you to post it up. $100, I'm posting mine. I'm not asking you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Bless the name of God. Amen. I know it's important. Amen. Bishop, I don't have the 100, but I have 50. I want you to post that. Post that up. Come on. We're posting it up. Amen. We believe and we're trusting God. Amen. Come on. Bless the name of God. Those of you who posting the 100, posting the 50. Come on. We're sowing. We're sowing. If you sow it, God will grow it. I'm telling you. Bless the name of God. Bishop, I don't have 50, but I got $25 that I set to the side to sow for an offering. It's a prepared offering. Amen. Post that up. Come on. Post that up. I believe in moving just as quick as we want our return. Amen. We want a quick return so quick. Amen. Bless the name of God. We thank and praise God. Amen. Those of you who don't have the 25, amen, you got 20, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, whatever it is that you're sowing, I want you to put it up, amen, quarter, dime, nickel, penny, whatever you have, sow it. God is going to honor it. He's going to bless it. He knows your heart. Bless the name of God. It's not the amount. Bless the name of God. We call out increments because everybody is not in the same financial bracket. Bless the name of God. Amen. And you can't get upset. Amen. Because somebody else is in a different bracket. Bless the name of God. Amen. We all going to be in high bracket soon. Amen. We believe and trust God. Amen. We've been doing something. Amen. For the past couple of months, probably a year or so. Amen. Called the $8 seed. Amen. Those of you, this is outside of our tithes and our offering. I want you to get that $8 and start posting that $8 up. We believe God for new beginning. Bless the name of God. You cannot obtain new holding on to old. Amen. Amen. New beginning. Amen. That $8 new beginning. Amen. Postures us and put us in position. Amen. To look for new. Amen. I want God to do a new thing. Amen. In my life. In everything that's connected to me do a new thing bless the name of god so that eight dollars amen thank you so much for your obedience and your labor of love and your support bless the name of god we're all praying together come on let us pray father god in the name of jesus we thank you and we praise you for these your givers we ask that you bless them according to your word father you said in your word you give a seed to the soul and bread to the eater you also stated in your word given it shall be given unto us in good measure press down together and run over shall men give unto our bosoms father we thank you 
Now, Father, we pray, God, that you do more for these than they can anticipate. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Come on. Come on. Put some clapping hands up. Amen. We thank and praise God for that. Listen, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Amen. Make sure. Amen. All of our members, all our leaders, make sure. Amen. You go. Amen. Do your to your group chat. Amen. And see all the information. Amen. For our Zoom meeting. Amen. This is our church meeting. Amen. We want to share with you some stuff, some good news. Amen. And we trust and we believe God. Amen for what the Lord is doing. Listen, remember, if you got the faith, God has the power. God bless you. What a powerful service we had today. Thank you once again for sharing your time and space with us. We want you to stay connected with us by going to our Facebook page, The Powerhouse Church in Y, or go to our website, www.powerhousechurchny.org Once again, thank you so much for sharing your time and space, whether it's on Facebook or in person. We're excited to have you here. Remember, if you got the faith, God has the power.